I can't believe you brought homemade pudding. My business partner teased me, expecting fancier desserts. He tossed the pudding in the trash, leaving me speechless. Feeling angry and helpless, I went home. My wife seemed oddly cheerful, promising that the rude man would face consequences. The next day, something surprising happened when I went to meet the president. My name is Danny Klein, and I've been working in an office for 10 years now. Today, I'm feeling nervous because I have to bring a gift to a tough business partner named Walter Morris. He's picky about gifts, and if he doesn't like yours, he won't even talk to you properly. Sometimes he'll even make up excuses to send you away. But he's important for our business, so I have to deal with him. One day, my manager came to my desk and praised our company's great patented technology. I agreed but also mentioned how they've become arrogant because of it. We used to work together closely, but things have changed. My manager looked at me sympathetically. I chuckled bitterly and ran my hand through my hair. I've heard that the president and his wife are nice people, despite Walter being difficult. I hope things improve soon. Yeah. Things should get better soon. It's tough. But it's all part of the job. Thanks, I'll give it my best shot, I replied to my manager. But finding the right gift every time is such a hassle. If I get him the same thing again, he accuses me of being lazy, I complained. My manager suggested, you know, the president's wife really likes pudding. Maybe next time you see them, consider getting some pudding. As soon as my manager mentioned it, I thought of a special pudding from a local store. It was incredibly smooth and creamy, just melting in your mouth. It had the perfect balance of richness and sweetness, exactly like the pudding my wife, Lily, makes. Lily runs a small pastry shop from our home, and her puddings are a hit with everyone in the neighborhood. They're so popular that they often sell out by mid-afternoon, loved by both kids and seniors alike. After work, I hurried home to find Lily already in the kitchen, preparing dinner. As I entered, a sweet aroma filled the air, making me smile. Lily greeted me with a cheerful welcome home, humming a tune as she worked. Excitedly, I told her about my conversation with the boss and how his wife loved pudding. I want to take some as a gift. Can you make some? I asked eagerly. Lily hesitated for a moment before asking, Do you think my pudding will be good enough? I could see a hint of nervousness behind her smile, but it reassured me. Even though Lily makes amazing puddings, making one as a gift for my business partner's wife was understandably stressful for her. Still, she agreed with a nod and said, okay. Once dinner was ready, Lily didn't even sit down to eat. Instead, she jumped straight into preparing the pudding for tomorrow, insisting she needed to get it done. Thank you, Lily. I'm sorry, I said, feeling grateful but guilty. It's no problem. I want more people to taste my pudding, Lily replied cheerfully, diving into the preparations. She moved back and forth between the kitchen and her shop, busy with the task. Seeing her determination, I couldn't just stand there watching. I decided to pitch in and help, following Lily's instructions closely. We ended up staying up later than usual, eagerly anticipating the reaction of the boss and his wife the next day. I fell asleep almost instantly. The next morning, I woke up to find Lily already awake, her head popping out from the shop, wearing a white apron. It's ready, she announced, holding a tray of neatly wrapped puddings in her hands. Thank you, Lily. I expressed my gratitude, not knowing how early she must have woken up to prepare everything. I thanked her repeatedly, feeling appreciative of her effort. Lily, looking a bit bashful, responded, It didn't take too long because you helped me. As I reminisced about the morning's activities, a smile crept onto my face. I carefully placed the puddings, wrapped in white paper bags with blue ribbons, on the passenger seat and let out a sigh. With renewed confidence, I started the company car. There shouldn't be any problem with Lily's pudding. It's sure to impress. That's what I believed, until I heard a voice that crushed my hopes. What's this? Just like always. I mentioned Walter's name to the receptionist with a smile, and she asked me to wait for a moment. Taking a seat in the entrance, I made sure the pudding in the bag was safe. As I waited, I noticed Walter approaching from the elevator, wearing a slight smile. When he glanced at what I was holding, he immediately questioned, What is this? With doubt in his voice. I couldn't help but flinch. Nevertheless, I replied calmly, it's just a small gift. It's pudding made by my wife, who runs a pastry shop. But before I could finish, Walter scoffed, witting, are you mocking me? Shouldn't you bring something fancier? His words were filled with disdain, and he looked at me as if he were mocking me. At first, I didn't understand, 
but as it sank in, I felt my fists clenching in anger. Walter was a client I had been working with smoothly until now. I couldn't afford to ruin our relationship, so I swallowed my emotions and tried to reason with him. Even though it's not fancy, my wife's puddings are quite popular, I explained, but Walter dismissed it, saying, No way. I can't eat pudding made by an amateur. He snatched the bag of pudding from my hand roughly, leaving me stunned. What are you doing? I exclaimed, taken aback. My anxious voice clashed with Walter's dry laughter, attracting curious glances from the receptionist and other employees passing by. I can't believe you give me such low-quality stuff, Walter remarked, lifting the bag to his face with a scrutinizing gaze. My anger surged, but I fought to keep my cool. Then I heard him say, It's the CEO's wife's favorite. Even so, would you bring something made by an amateur? I defended, feeling the need to stand up for Lily's skill. My wife is definitely not an amateur. Even so, you must understand that I can't serve such an unsightly pudding to the president. With that, Walter released his grip on the bag, letting it fall into the trash can nearby. It happened so fast that I couldn't react, leaving me standing there in shock. The bag with the pudding inside made a mournful sound as it landed in the bin. A small gasp escaped from the receptionist nearby. I'll take care of it for you today. Just be more careful next time, Walter stated, his voice dripping with irritation. All I could do was stare at the discarded pudding and mutter a barely audible, I... I'm sorry. Walter nodded in response, his expression unreadable. Whether he was satisfied with my apology, I couldn't tell. I've got some urgent matters to attend to. I hate to do this, but could you please leave? Without waiting for my response, he turned and headed towards the elevator. I stood there, stunned, unable to tear my gaze away from the discarded pudding. Time seemed to blur, and before I knew it, I found myself back in my company car. The memory of Lily's hard work on the pudding weighed heavily on my heart, filling me with a mix of sadness and anger. Most of all, I felt frustrated with myself for not being able to stand up for her or myself. All because Walter was a business partner. I couldn't focus on work that day. My mind consumed with how to tell Lily about what happened. When I got home Lily greeted me with a smile, casually sipping tea on the couch. Caught off guard, I paused and untying my tie. Did something happen? Lily asked, noticing my hesitation and concern. Unable to hide it any longer, I confessed everything to her. I'm sorry, he threw away the pudding you worked so hard on right in front of me. Lily looked surprised at first, but then she gently squeezed my hand. It's not your fault. Maybe there was something wrong with the pudding. Deep down though, I knew that wasn't true. Walter hadn't even bothered to look inside the bag before tossing it away. It didn't matter what was inside. If it wasn't up to his standards, it was going in the trash. Before I could apologize again, Lily stopped me. She seemed to think for a moment, then grinned mischievously. That man's getting fired. Fired? I questioned, taken aback by Lily's comment. I'm just kidding though, she reassured me with a soft chuckle. Even though it might not have been perfect, it's still disheartening to hear that the pudding I worked so hard on was thrown away. Her reaction was understandable. Anyone would be upset to hear their efforts were disregarded like that, even Lily, who rarely makes such remarks about rude clients. But who knows, it could happen, she added mysteriously, leaving me feeling a bit puzzled. But that was the end of our conversation. Lily urged me to wash up early that night, so I bathed in a mix of confusion and frustration before turning in earlier than usual. The next day, still feeling weighed down by yesterday's events, I headed to work with a heavy heart. My boss had instructed me the day before. I know it's not ideal, but tomorrow you need to buy a cake from the high-end western confectionery store in front of the station. His words echoed in my mind as I stopped by the pastry shop near the station on my way to work and bought a cake. I placed the box from the fancy pastry shop on the passenger seat, letting out a sigh heavier than the day before. Yesterday, I had promised Walter that I'd come back today with an apology gift. Maybe because of the incident, Walter had responded with an even more arrogant tone. All right, I'm counting on you this time, he said before hanging up. I should get going, I told myself, mustering up some motivation as I settled into the driver's seat of my company car. I drove towards the client's office, determined to make things right. As I entered through the automatic doors, a receptionist who recognized me hurried over. Are you Mr. Klein from Company X? She asked. Yes, that's me. But please, lead the way, I replied. Following her, I stepped into the elevator, and before I knew it, 
we had arrived at our destination floor. The room I was directed to turned out to be the president's office. The receptionist knocked a few times, and when the door opened, I was ushered in. Inside, I found the president of the client company, his wife, and Walter, all looking uneasy. I had expected Walter to be his usual arrogant self. Especially after yesterday's incident, but I was surprised. Nice to meet you, I'm Danny Klein from Company XX. Thank you for having me here today, I said, puzzled by the situation, as I greeted the president, Mr. Peterson. You must be Danny. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Mr. Peterson, and this is my wife, Anne. Mr. Peterson replied, cutting the formalities short. They exchanged glances, then called my name and bowed deeply. We are truly sorry for what happened. Please accept our apologies, Mrs. Peterson added sincerely. I'm sorry, what did you say? I asked, feeling surprised by how the president's tone suddenly changed. His wife, standing beside him, looked shocked too, bowing her head without saying a word. I quickly asked them to lift their heads, but they wouldn't. Then, I noticed Walter who was standing behind them, also bowing. This was unusual because Walter was usually very proud and never apologized. But there he was, saying sorry with careful words for the first time. I was taken aback and didn't know what to say. Walter continued, Actually, yesterday my wife found something in the lobby trash while she was cleaning. His wife nodded to confirm. She seemed upset and asked around about it. She found out that the pudding you brought earlier had been thrown away disrespectfully by someone. We called him to ask, and at first, he denied it, but later he admitted it reluctantly. Mr. Peterson gave Walter a cold look, and Walter seemed to feel it as he bit his lip and looked away. I didn't know Mrs. Peterson liked pudding. I thought it was from Danny, and I tossed it without thinking. I'm sorry, Walter said, sounding quieter than usual. I was surprised by Walter's unusual behavior. Mrs. Peterson shook her head firmly. That's not why I'm upset, she said in an angry tone, breaking her silence. Danny, I've known about the pudding from Lily's store for a while. I knew it was really popular and it always sold out quickly, even though the store was busy. You made the pudding for me. It's disappointing that an employee of a manufacturing company doesn't appreciate the effort put into making a product. I was shocked that Mrs. Peterson knew about Lily's store and understood the emotions behind making something. Walter, looking even more nervous, tried to apologize again, but Mr. Peterson told him to face the person he was apologizing to and lifted his pale face up. Walter Hooper sincerely apologized to me for carelessly throwing away the handmade gift from your wife yesterday. He faced me directly, owing his head repeatedly. In that moment, I felt a sense of clarity. When I got home, Lily was sitting on the sofa drinking tea, just like yesterday. Without saying hello, I told her about what had happened today. Lily listened to me without interrupting until I finished. Then she smiled and said, I thought as much. Her calm demeanor suggested she had expected everything that happened. Lily got up and made a cup of tea for me from the kitchen. As she handed it to me, she began to speak. Actually, yesterday evening, a man in a suit came to buy our pudding, but we were all out. He mentioned that the wife of his company's CEO loves our pudding. Could it be the president's wife he meant? Probably Ann Peterson, Lily said with excitement, nodding happily. It's amazing to know there are people who appreciate the effort we put into our products. It motivates me to make even better things for them. Lily took a sip of her tea, still smiling. Seeing her so genuinely happy made me understand Mr. and Mrs. Peterson's words better, but it also made me feel guilty. Did I truly value the effort of producers like Lily while doing my job? I was angry at Walter's arrogance, but was it because I thought we were doing him a favor by selling our products? Maybe I was being carried away too. Like Lily, Shouldn't I strive to connect the creator's thoughts with the consumers through my work? As I thought about all of this, Lily noticed something and gently placed her hand on my shoulder. Perhaps from now on, you'll consider both the creator's and the user's perspectives. Lily's words made me feel a bit embarrassed, but more importantly, they gave me a new outlook on my job. After everything that happened, Walter's attitude changed a lot. He wasn't as arrogant as before and stopped demanding gifts. Now, we openly share our opinions and have a better relationship. Like Lily, I want to keep delivering the creator's ideas to users through my work.